it. Good girl. I'd like to introduce you to Berlin, A4665728. And Berlin is a an enthusiastic and happy one-year-old spayed female black and tan shepherd mix. Uh, she's got kind of the face of a Belgian Malinois, the coat more of a German shepherd, and she's petite. She's only 45 pounds, so a great medium size, a medium sized girl. Um, as you can see, Berlin sits on command, um, and she's she's an active girl, intelligent, curious, wants to go explore. Um, she had a little bit of training, but could use a little additional training in terms of walking on a leash. Uh, Berlin is has been really interested in other dogs, um, but she gets really excited, so we think with a proper introduction, she should get along fine with other dogs, but needs to be that introduction needs to be handled in a supervised and controlled way. Uh, and Berlin absolutely adores people. She is eager to go say hello and, you know, kind of put her paw up and get love and affection. Kim, is there anything else you want to tell us about Berlin? Uh, she has the softest, smoothest coat I've ever seen. She's so soft. So soft. Absolutely. So this is Berlin, a great medium-sized girl, and she's here at the Baldwin Park Shelter. And she, you know, she is fairly active and intelligent, so we think she'd do best in a home with you know, a fairly active person who can take her on walks and maybe even hikes and stuff like that where she can exercise both her mind and her body. So please come meet Berlin here at the Baldwin Park Shelter. I'd like to introduce you to the beautiful Star, A47532275. And Star is an approximately two-year-old uh, red and brown and white female Papillon mix. There goes our... There goes the Metro Link and... <laughs> Star is considering getting on it, but isn't too bothered by it. Um, and so Star is a two-year-old Papillon mix, um, absolutely beautiful. She's got kind of a foxy little look to her, and she came into the Baldwin Park Shelter as a stray from, well, I don't know where she's from, but she arrived here at the Baldwin Park Shelter on September 6th. And Star um, is pretty good on a leash. She's got a little prance that she walks along with and is quite quite delightful um, and she's definitely got the basic concepts of a leash down she likes people she's friendly and affectionate she went straight up to Sandra here and gave her some kisses and said hello and there is let me just show you this there's a big dog who just um, who is this Jenna this is Dolce. This is Dolce who just decided to photobomb the, the video here and Star isn't bothered Star's by fine. it at all. Star seems to be okay around bigger dogs and uh, she's in a kennel with little dogs and um, getting along just fine with that. Star has a nice medium energy level. She weighs 12 pounds and we think she's going to fit in really nicely in an apartment or a single family home and she'd be fine probably as an only dog or uh, as an you know, in a multi-canine household. Um, Sandra, Star is quite smitten with you. Is there anything else that you want to say oh, about she's, Star? She's just a love bug. I mean, she just is going to be great, you know, out prancing around on leash as she does, or hanging out in your lap and giving you a little kiss every once in a while. So I just think she's going to be good and affectionate for any situation. Right, Star? So this is Star. She's a beautiful girl, and she's here at the Baldwin Park Shelter. Please come meet her. And come meet Dolce too. She's pretty awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness, I have the sweetest big guy for you. This is Teddy. He's just a big teddy bear. His ID number is A478-9565. And he is a Belgian Malinois. Um, a gorgeous one at that. We think he's about five years old. And he came in actually as an owner surrender on January 6th because um, a dog of this size, they said, was too much responsibility for them. Um, he is 82 pounds, but he's 82 pounds of love and, and goodness. He's just a gentle giant. Um, he sees another dog right now he wants to go, go say hi to. Um, he is really mellow, and which is an awesome quality for such a big dog. He's just very easy to handle. He walks very easy on leash. Um, he's good with other dogs. Uh, he is just an amazing big guy. If you're looking for a big guy, that's not like you know a lot of big guys are, are strong and um, take a lot of uh, a lot of strength this guy is just like pretty easy and mellow um, we think he would make a fabulous family dog an awesome dog to have in a single family home um, you know and, and he would look like a good protector although he's mellow and, and friendly and awesome you know just uh, if you're walking around hopefully people will not mess with you because <laughs> he's got that fabulous look about him but he's just a sweetheart look at the gentle giant sweet baby 
So come on down to the Baldwin Park Shelter and please meet Teddy. He's a big teddy bear and he wants to go home with the family. Right, Teddy? Yes. Bye-bye, Teddy. You're awesome. Look how beautiful you are. <laughs> oh, and he sat for us a couple times. Um, we don't know if he knows commands, but we definitely think he's eager to learn and to please for sure. He's sniffing some dogs. <laughs> Bye, Teddy. Sixty minutes overtime. These dogs are really unlike anything you've ever seen. There isn't a human being on earth that can outrun these dogs. And when you see them run, you know that's true. We're in Texas at the ranch of Mike Rickland, who's a former Navy SEAL. This is not for the faint hearted. No, it isn't. It's, it's serious business, no different than any other military training that we do. It's not a game. They're held to the same standard that we are. These dogs are not trained to kill. In fact, they're trained to go for the limbs. The purpose of that is that they're used to apprehend suspects on the battlefield. It's scary. It's scary. You watch this incredibly dramatic training and we got something valuable to report on when Ruben Heyman Cantor, our associate producer on this story, when he volunteered to do this. And you're sure <coughs> you want to do this, Ruben? Are you guys going to videotape this? I volunteered. I absolutely volunteered. And the moment they started to put the bite suit on him, Ruben's face drained of color. He literally went gray before our eyes. Once I was about halfway dressed, I began to think this is a bad idea. <laughs> this is remarkably brave. You get it? Or stupid. You're really sure you want to do this? Yeah, I think at one point someone said to me, don't present your face. Don't give him your face? Did you hear that? Don't, don't present your face to him. Honey, it's William that Penn one? is the life insurance policy. <laughs> that was the funny side of it. The serious side of it was that there really was an opportunity to learn for ourselves okay. what this is like. But it's a big leap of faith to accept when someone says to you, don't worry, he's not gonna go for your throat. You know, we've trained him. Oh, really? That's great. What if you're wrong? The dog's gonna be over here. Okay. You're gonna turn and you're gonna start running. Okay. And as you run, just kind of chicken wing it a little bit. Chicken wing it, okay. And he'll come up and he'll bite you. Okay. And when he bites you, just take a step forward. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And then get him over here. Just kind of move them around a little bit. I'm not going to go to the ground if that's, I can help. That's him. the the goal is to not go to the ground. Okay. And this dog takes off running and it starts to go. And Ruben is just running and he's not looking behind him. He's just going, going, going. I was running for many seconds where nothing was happening. And he's charging ahead almost like out of chariots of fire. And he said, I, he thought for a moment, is it possible? Could I actually outrun this dog? And then I thought, that is a stupid thought that just ran through your head. But for that brief moment, Reuben thought, I can do it. 
I can do it. And then, of course, a the, moment later, the dog catches up with him and boom. It happened so fast. It was like, it, it was one second, I'm running as fast as I can in this suit, and in the next moment, I am on the ground. Got him? This is not enjoyable in any way. The dog is on him. The dog is on him, and he's got him by the arm, and he will not let go, and he's, I mean, he is letting everybody know that he's in charge. He's got his man, and he is not letting go. What kind of dog was that? I believe it was a Belgian Malinois. Okay. But uh, it wasn't my focus at the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've had enough. Okay, enough. Okay. 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 Lost it. Our story is about what makes those dogs so special. And there are so few of them that have the abilities to be a dog of war at that level. What do I got? Ah, uh, proof. Yeah. <laughs> this particular breed has a drive to go after something that you can't even begin to teach. It has to be there from the start. And they're all, they're Belgian Malinois? Yes, yep. That drive to go after something is what keeps those dogs going when it's miserable cold, when it's hours and hours and hours in the blistering desert heat, when the conditions are so bad, most people shut down. These dogs drive through it. They get shot and they drive through it. They get blown up and they drive through it. They're unbelievable. 